So we've been getting a lot of questions on what are calibration curves, how do I use them? So that's what this is going to be about. Uh, calibration curves, what are they and why are they used? First thing that we have to understand is what do we get out of our HPLC and GC systems? Well, we get a chromatogram, which we have here. Uh, it gives us a peak shown here. And what does that tell us? Well, if you see here highlighted in blue and zoomed in over here highlighted in blue, it gives us the area under the curve. Well, that area under the curve correlates to how much stuff I've put in here. So what does that tell me? This is known as a standard. How do I know it's a standard? Because I made it. I put 1% ethanol into my system and it gives me a peak. It comes out right here and it gives me a specific area. This area is 374.65 area counts. What does that tell me? Every time I run 1% ethanol, I should get close to that uh, area. And that standard tells me that's uh, what I put in there, 1%. So how do I know if I run something not 1%? How do I know how much is in there? Well, that's where a calibration curve comes into play. So we're going to run a theoretical calibration curve and we're gonna walk through each step. So in this case, we have our example calibration curve. So we have our calibration level here and our area over here. So it's area versus calibration level. So we have a calibration level of five. It doesn't matter what, how much it is. And we have an area of 100. So we have five versus 100. Well, one point doesn't make a calibration curve, so we have to add more. And the more points we add in there, the more confident we can be in our calibration curve. So we add a second one. So we add 10. 10 gives us 200. So 10 is twice five and it gives us twice as much area, so 200. And then we have 15, three times as much, so we have 300. And 20, and that's our final point, 20 gives us 400. Great, so we have four points. What does that tell us? Well, what we need to do is go back to ninth or 10th grade math and do a linear regression. What is that? We're gonna draw a line, and that line is gonna go through each of our points as best it can, and it's going to give us two things. It's going to give us our equation, y equals mx plus b. In this case, y equals 20x plus 0, because it's a perfect curve in a perfect world. And then it's going to give us an r squared value. r squared in this case is 1. What is r squared? It tells us how close we are to a perfect line. In this case, it's a perfect line in a perfect world, so we get perfect results. doesn't happen in the real world, so we're going to take a look at real world examples. Here we go, a real world example of ethanol. So we did a point, a 0.05%, a 1% and a 5% alcohol. Uh, here we go, our three points. And you can see our line is best fit. It doesn't quite go through the center of each one. That's okay, it's real world data. And we get an R squared value, not quite one, but very close, a 0.9991. That's a really good curve. Also gives us our slope of 499.8 and our intercept of negative 40.4. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us if we do an unknown, and our unknown, we want to keep it bracketed in between our points here, our, our lower point and our upper point. So say we got an area of 1,000. We would draw a line across and then drop it down, and it would give us some value. It's very difficult to do visually on a graph, but using y equals mx plus b, we can get an exact point. The great thing is, is we don't have to do the math. The Lucidity software does it for us. So here I've drawn out, I've done another uh, injection of an American lager. It gives us a beautiful chromatogram, one point. We know that that's ethanol based on our standard. It comes out at the same point. And the, the software has labeled it as ethanol. Gives us an area of 314.61 and that gives us a concentration of 0 0.978. So what does that tell us? Well, that I diluted this beer down to 1% alcohol. It gives me very close to 1% alcohol. Then what I do is I take out my dilution factor because I did dilute it, and we know that beer is not 1%. I do the math, and I get 4.45% alcohol. The labeled amount was 4.5% alcohol. Why am I not exact? Why did I get the exact amount? Well, number one, it wasn't perfect data, which it never is going to be. And two, this was one point done on a 
one sample of beer. So I would have to do multiple samples over multiple runs to get an average of what that concentration of alcohol in that beer would be to tell me how much alcohol is in a typical batch. So our calibration curves are very specific to a method. In my case, it was ethanol. So if I was to change out my compound and run something different, I would have to run a different calibration curve. And it's specific to that method that I ran. So if I change anything about that method, I have to redo my calibration curve. Also, different institutions require calibration curves to be run at different intervals. It could be a day, a week, a month. You would have to check with your institution to update your calibration curve accordingly.